how do you think about the role that Washington is now playing in the future of investment? Of course, Carlisle started really its roots in D.C. with big defense deals. What does that look like now? Well, well, thank you very much for having me for sure today. And, uh, you know, it's on the you know, midst of our Washington Day where we have a group of our uh, key investors here in town for uh, some time with policymakers and, and thought leaders, and it's been a, a wonderful day. Uh, and it's great to be in Washington. We've, as you mentioned, we've been, our heritage is in, in Washington. Our roots are here. We, uh, the firm was founded in the late 1980s uh, in, uh, in Washington. And, uh, you know, we've done a number of deals in, uh, in investments in companies right in this region, in the government services area. In fact, we've invested in about $30 billion of value in, uh, in over 50 companies in this area. Uh, and a number of our professionals Professionals like me have been at the firm uh, for over 20 years, and we've become a bit of Washington with, uh, you know, friends and relationships, and our kids have grown up here, and, uh, and there's a network effect that's incredibly helpful in, in what we do, uh, and not only in sort of understanding where budgets may be going and where uh, opportunities may mm -hmm. be uh, on, the, right. on the regulatory side, but also, you know, where the streams are for future funding. You know, when you think about future funding, so much question around how much the government is spending on certain parts of the economy. How does Carlisle follow the money here? At the end of the day, is this increased government spending really fueling the ability to do more deals in the sector? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's very interesting. If you look back to the time when David Rubenstein was in the Carter White House to today, government spending is up 6x. But the number of employees that are federal employees is about the same. And that's not, the reason for that is that there are tons of businesses in town, contractors and businesses that support the government that are here locally. And that's a really strong target rich area for us for, for investment. And because we're close to the action here, we're able to see the customer and understand the customer of the federal government and where their trends are. There's a stream of funding and there are streams that move much faster uh, within that stream and, uh, and we target those. Obviously, at Carlisle, you do invest across sectors. If you could put into perspective how much government services, defense, uh, is a part of that broader pool of private equity, do you see it being a bigger pie, given what you just said? Yeah, absolutely. So we have five key sectors. The government services is one of them for sure. Healthcare, industrial, technology, and financial services are our big five sectors. And, and each of them could be around 20% of a particular fund. Uh, and we definitely expect that government services will be every bit of its uh, its whole position there in that 20% going forward, just given the opportunity set and, and the quality of our team here. You know, Brian, I'm also curious in getting your view here on kind of the broader private equity environment as well. Everywhere we look here at Bloomberg, there's certainly a number of firms that say that, okay, the environment is getting a lot better for exits. We're going to start being able to eventually return profits to investors through sales, through IPOs. But the progress in 2024 has been fairly slow. What starts to turn that around? Yeah, I think I would say things are beginning to improve, certainly, in the markets. When you look back to how active we all were in 21 and 22, yeah, we're not at that level for sure. But when you look and combine the business performance across portfolios, see some stability in rates, stability in where the equity markets are, and the credit markets are strong, uh, we're beginning to see the whole market improve on buying and selling. And we expect that we'll be more active. We have a number of businesses that we're, uh, we're looking to exit and have good conversations going in the back half of this year and, and into next year. So it, it's, it's going to be a, st a steady improvement uh, cycle, and uh, you know, we're certainly gaining confidence. Now, what is the roadblock here, and what is starting to improve? Obviously, we're talking on a day where you're seeing a massive move downward in yields, two-year, 10-year. How much could that help improve the environment for deal-making? Well, oh, I, I suppose it could help to some degree. You know, for us, though, uh, you know, our mindset and approach has always been the investment approach is to buy good, strong businesses where we can identify a clear plan to make those companies better, where we can help on the top line and hop on oper help on operational improvement to drive earnings, and we partner with world-class management teams. And that works whether the rates are up a little bit or down a little bit or through election cycles or through economic cycles. Over time, that's the, that's the process that works in returns. Well, to that end, too, you're seeing a market floating today at record highs as well. Another roadblock that we've been hearing a lot of is valuations. Our valuations are also starting to improve to the point that sales are more possible. I do think, I do think that's the case, that valuations are becoming more in the zone. I think I go back to my previous comments. You just see more confidence in the market where there's more certainty about where that earnings stream is likely to be for the next year or two and more confidence in those 
credit markets and businesses have grown into a more actionable zone on exit and on uh, on those new deals as well. It's just taken a bit of time for this to come back together, but I think we're beginning to see the signs of it. You know, it's interesting. At the beginning of this conversation, you spoke a little about how about your investors and you are speaking with policymakers throughout the day. Of course, we're months away from an election in the United States. What is top of mind right now for investors while you're in D.C.? Well, I think uh, a number of the topics that you, we've hit on as we've spoken today are the, certainly the election and what the implications of that might be on on markets and uh, and rate changes, what the likelihood of rate changes and the and the, the likelihood that inflation will will come in or not. Those are the big topics that uh, that I think are on everyone's minds, and uh, I think certainly on the minds that are of the folks who are managing some of these rates.